from downtown San Rafael. It is another perfect night for Pacific's baseball. Stuart Horn and Alex Swan, your 2014 CMCM Pacific's telecasters. And Alex, to say that tonight's game is gigantic as far as the standings are concerned is an understatement. The Pacific's right now hanging on to such a slight margin. The opportunity for them to uh, beat out everybody in the first half and automatically get a berth into the championship series in late August comes and down to tonight, and girls, tomorrow, and the following game. These three Thunder games Knights. must be swept over the Stompers who are here in downtown San Rafael. The Stompers at 21-15, the Pacifics at 20-16. and 16. These two teams could not After be closer. Time, asked, and if the Pacifics run, don't win all three games, recaps. they are out. And, and of, of course, America, the winner of the first half the meets the winner game. of the second and half. And now, as soon as the national anthem is over, we'll talk a little bit more about the implications and we'll have the starting lineups. And we are ready for tonight's national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous light for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red ahead of us and the Pacifics to say that their back is up against the wall is an understatement Alex well it's do or die and you came in trying to close it out against the Admirals and win that series they can't do it so now they put them in a position where if you don't take three against the Stompers you're done and it rests on De Jesus' hands tonight and they have to face a man named Gabriel Garcia who they've never beaten all year so talk about kind of your last lifeline you got to lay it all out on the line right here and it's coming against the ace of the Stompers yeah that's a that's a good call and the Stompers are going to bring Garcia because they realize that a single win against the Pacifics all but guarantees them a berth in the championship series at the end of the season. Gabriel Garcia, a 4-0 and record. 54 innings pitched at 2-3-3 ERA. The starting lineups now for the Stompers. Matt Hibbert will lead off and play over in right field. Glenn Walker, a new signee, 
for the Stompers will start tonight at shortstop and bat second. Jace Ray, oh, the pesky Jace Ray in center field will bat third, and I mean pesky. Defensively, Ray, with the ex possible exception of Zach Pace, unparalleled in the Pacific Association. Joel Carranza will bat clean up the DH, followed by Steve Renato. He'll be batting fifth at third base. Marshall McDonald will play first base and bat sixth, and he'll be followed by Jaime Davalle, batting seventh behind the plate. Reed Chenworth will bat eighth and play left field, and at second base will be TJ Gavlik. Hibbert, Walker, Ray, Carranza, Renato, McDonald, Davalle, Chenworth and Gavlik for the visiting Stompers. For the Pacifics defensively, Ravel Santana in left with Zach Pace, the man in center field. Michael Hobo over in right with Evan Boyd at third. David Kiriakos tonight starts at shortstop with Chase Fontaine at second base. Mike Orofice at first with Eric Boehner behind the dish. And Ryan DeJesus a three and one record, a two nine three ERA will be on the mound. In 30 and two thirds innings pitched, De Jesus has given up 10 earned runs, 22 strikeouts against six, uh, six walks. And we are ready for baseball. Must win for the Pacifics. The final three games of the first half of the season. And the first batter is Matt Hibbert. Hibbert takes a strike right down the middle from Ryan DeJesus, right here on Marin TV. Happy you all decided to join us. It's absolutely beautiful out here. A 7.07 first pitch. And a line drive is torn over to Evan Boyd, who leans over to his left and hauls it in one away. And that's going to be key for the Pacifics throughout this whole series. How good is their fielding going to be? It's been sloppy the past two outings. Boyd at the hot corner makes a nice play. And that's a good start to help out his pitcher. And he's staring straight into the fireball in the sky as the sun sets. And if you play short or third base or left field for that matter, here at Albert Park, you must deal with the sun. Boyd did a great job, a job of it there. Here's Glenn Walker. The first time we've seen Walker, who takes a fastball for a strike. Jace Ray is on deck. One away here in the top of the first inning. Horn and Swan on Marin TV. Walker, that wide open stance, takes a breaking ball. Strike two called. Just underway. Mm -mm -mm. Pacifics are really up against it. They need to bring it three games in a row. And this is swatted foul first base side. Well, ever since Aritz Garcia was released from this team, Ray Serrano's been looking for a shortstop. And it's been Glenn Walker. He's only played six games for him, but he's batting above 350. And so he's provided a quality bat. He's got good speed, flashes the leather. Here's the 0-2. And it's straight up the middle and over the bag into center field, a base hit for Glenn Walker. And Jace Ray will make his way to the hitting area. The first hit of the night. for Walker. De Jesus, the big left-hander. Looks into Boehner who gets the start tonight behind the dish. Boehner's been doing a great job defensively and he's a bona fide slugger. I think the reason why Boehner is also in there is the Stompers have stolen the most bases against the Pacifics among any other team in the association with 23. And Boehner's got a cannon behind the plate, and they know they got to stop the runners on the base pass. You're absolutely right. In that last series against the Admirals, Boehner played the final game and gunned down two that, that day. And a 
Quick throw over to first base, and Glenn Walker scurries back to the bag safely. Nothing and one here on Ray, the center fielder, with Joel Carranza on deck. One away here in the top of the first. De Jesus and another throw over to first. Totally preoccupied with Walker, the runner. As well he should be. The Stompers with a lot of speed at the top of the lineup. He swiped two bags on the ear. Here's the 0 1. Slider is low. 1 and 1. Ooh, that didn't miss by much. Boehner rests the mask up on the dome as if to suggest, hmm, that was a pretty good pitch. Here's the 1-1. One, one. And this break, hey kids, breaking ball is away. We've got a new game tonight. Like Two and one. A lot of great things going on down here at Albert Park. Tomorrow will be a 12-15 first pitch. That'll be radio only at PacificsBaseball.com. And then Thursday night we'll be back on the air. And this is a shot up the first base line and foul. 2-2. Two, two. That's a quick getaway. You start tonight at 7, and you got a 12-15 start the next day. And every game's critical. Yeah, the business person special tomorrow. Once again, any of our young people who are working during the week, they can run out at lunchtime and catch a few innings. And then head back to the office and maybe pick up the last few innings on uh, PacificsBaseball.com on radio. Jace Ray stands back in. 2-2. Two -two. Curve ball. Oh, so close. Now it's a full count. This is, uh, this is a big moment for Ryan DeJesus. You don't want to have big moments in the top of the first inning, but this is one of them. And it's fouled back to the screen. And the seventh pitch is coming up. Remember, Joel Carranza, the DH is on deck. He's the cleanup batter, the big slugger Carranza, and then followed by Steve Renato. So DeJesus has his hands full with the middle of the lineup and only one away. And another foul ball, this one down the third base line and out onto Anderson Drive. Broken glass, fix it fast at Marin Autoglass. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Who will win this battle? Jace Ray, the veteran. And he's tough to strike out. Only one over his last 23 trips to the plate. Count is full, and here it is. Fly ball to left field. Ravel Santana circles under it and hauls it in, two away, and that's exactly what DeJesus needed. It would have been nice to get him on one pitch instead of nine, but he gets the job done either way, and, hit, and uh, Walker cannot that advance from first. Two down now. Designated hitter, number seven. Noel As Joel Carranza makes his way up, the DH. Carranza way back in the batter's box with that wide open stance, as you can see. The protective apparatus on his left ankle, the leading ankle. And DeJesus fires over to first. And Walker is back. No score here in the top of the first inning. If you're just joining us, the Pacifics must win tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday. And he gets the high fastball, and Joel Carranza offers. One strike on him. That's pitching to the scouting report right there. Carranza, belt, big belt eye hitter, and he can elevate the ball when it's up in the zone. And DeJesus pitching to it, blew it by him. 0-1, and now a late-breaking slider is taken for a strike. Nothing in two to Carranza. Sunday, 
Jose Canseco is going to be here for the Home Run Derby. That starts at noon. Snap throw over to first, and Walker's back. And Canseco will participate in the Home Run Derby against a couple of three Pacifics sluggers. And that's all to benefit the Pat Tillman Foundation. And they got him picked over to Orofice. And now he's in a rundown. And Chase Fontaine tags Walker. And Carranza is left standing in the batter's box. So Walker is caught stealing for the third out. And we'll go to the bottom of the first inning. For the Pacifics, it will be David Kiriakos, Zach Pace, and Ravel Santana. When we come back, no score right here on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. We'll be right back. Oh, welcome back, everybody, from downtown San Rafael. Well, Alex, the Pacifics got through the top of the first with a, a little extra effort, but uh, they were able to do it without giving up any runs. So David Kiriakos is going to lead things off here in the bottom of the first. He takes a strike against Gabriel Garcia with that 2-3-3 ERA. Garcia, as Alex mentioned in the pregame, has not yet lost to the Pacifics. One strike on Kiriakos, who's batting 214. One home run and 15 RBIs. And he takes a fastball inside, buckles back, and it's called a strike. And Kiriakos can't believe it. Nothing in two. And what burns even more is he's beaten the Pacifics three times this year. So he's got their number. Garcia now. See if he can get Kiriakos to go fishing with the fastball low and away. One and two. Defensively for the visiting stompers, Reed Chenworth in left field with Jace Ray in center and Matt Hibbert over in right. Kiriakos stands in. One and two. And pounds one over to third. It's gloved by Renato. The long throw in time. One away. That's what Garcia gets. A lot of ground balls. Keeps the ball down in the zone. Hitters just roll over the top of them. So Zach Pace now. Always happy to see Pace in the batting area. Pace has been so clutch, batting 328. And he's the man that's actually seen Garcia fairly well. Pace batting 462 over the last seven days. And a fastball is poured in. Pace takes strike one. Ravel Santana is in the on deck circle. Pace stretches out and brings the hands very low. And he tears into one. And a base hit into left field. And Pace continues his onslaught of Garcia with a single over to left. He sets the table for the Pacific so many times and you can't do too much against Garcia. If it's out over the heart of the plate or towards the outer half, you gotta go the other way. And Pace is one of the best Pacific hitters at doing that. Here's Ravel Santana. Only been with the team about 10 days. Santana with three RBIs. Batting 286 with Michael Hobo on deck. We're in the bottom of the first inning, fans. And just one away. Throw over to first. And Zach is back. We were talking about earlier in a previous broadcast at the beginning of the year who had the best arm for the Pacifics. Santana's up there. He's got a cannon. Pace the runner at first. And here's the check swing to Ravel Santana. Called the strike. Two eighty six batter is Santana. 
but batting 320 over the last week. So the Pacific's hitting in the last seven or eight days has been exceptional, actually, as the fastball is low. And it's that seven-day stat, Alex, as you know, is always very telling. Well, it shows usually if a hitter is hot or cold, what they're trending like, how they're seeing the ball. Santana stands in and tears into one. Left field, and it gets down for a base hit right in front of Reed Chenler. So consecutive base hits for the San Rafaels has set the table for Michael Hoba. And you got to capitalize. You're not going to get too many opportunities against Garcia, so when you get runners in scoring position, you got to find a way to get them in. Well said. Gabriel Garcia is just too tough. The left-hander, he's got so much confidence, especially against the Pacific. He's perfect this season against San Rafael. Hoba batting 255. Good old number 10 stands in. Fastball is across the knees and taken for a strike. Jeremy Williams, the new guy on deck. Hoba with four home runs and 27 RBIs. Here in the bottom of the first. Garcia reaches to the heavens and now comes home. In the dirt, and Jaime Del Valle blocks it nicely, one and one. No score here in the bottom of the first. As you can see, by our HD graphics provided by Marin TV. And Hova gets one off of the glove of Renato at third. It's in to left field, coming around third and scoring easily is Zach Pace. Sliding in behind him is Ravel Santana in the third. And Michael Hova, Alex stops his second. And let's see if they give him a hit. They've got to give him a hit as it popped off of the glove of the third baseman, Steve Renato. It hasn't come up on the board yet, but I can't imagine they will rule that a, an error. And in fact, it is ruled a hit. So Mike Hoba has a double, an RBI, and the Pacific Zach Pace comes in to make it one nothing. Santana safe over at third. And here's Jeremy Williams, the DH. Now the Pacific's got a little something going. And I think Renato kind of was nonchalant about fielding that ball. Had an opportunity to snow cone, went off his mid. First pitch swinging, Jeremy Williams fouls one down the first base line. For a strike, Mike Orofice is on deck. That's Hoba's 28th RBI. And Williams stands back in and he inside outs a fastball down the first base line. Nothing in two. And if you're Williams, you just got to find a way to elevate this baseball into the outfield deep enough to score Santana. Don't have to do too much. Quick shout out to my mom recuperating after a little procedure yesterday. Hope you're doing well, mom. I know you are. I love you. So does the sidekick. My sidekick loves you too. Can you really blame him? I mean, what's not to love? Williams behind in the count, nothing in two. Batting 267 with runners at second and third. And this is behind the runner to second. Gavlet gloves it, and they concede the run. So Ravel Santana scores. Hoba moves over to third base, and Jeremy Williams with the sacrifice gets it done in a big way. Hitting behind the runners exactly what he was looking to do. He goes down 4-3. Here's Mike Orofice with Mike Hoba, the runner at third. Two runs in. That was an excellent at bat. Two strikes. What a protect. Boehner is on deck. Orofice batting 3-10. First year Pacific and the slider is and away. Number 22 on the season for Jeremy Williams. 
One ball on him. Orofice batting 346 in the last week. There's a fastball taken, one and one. That's huge for the Pacifics to get out ahead of Garcia first, drawing first blood. It's the one thing they have not been able to do, especially here where they must win tonight. And a breaking ball is swung on and missed by Orofice, one and two. Kind of a half-hearted hack, he realized as the ball was about 30 feet away from the mound that it was gonna be in the dirt. One and two to the first baseman. Two away, Hoba at third. In the dirt, blocked by Devaye, two and two. Same pitch, trying to get Orofice to chase. This time, he's more disciplined. 17 RBIs for Orofice. So he knows how to respond with runners in scoring position. He's walked 26 times. It's the most on the team. A walk here wouldn't be terrible. Even in the count, two and two. Bottom of the first inning. Curve ball is in the cap between first and second and Hoba scores easily. Orofice gets it done. Three nothing, how about that, Alex? Well, seeing eye ground ball, McDonald wasn't gonna be able to get it at first and then was able to trickle in the right field. But great at bats in the first inning, not trying to do too much, taking what Garcia's given you. And to get three against Gabriel Garcia, if you ask the Pacifics, would you take that in this opening series? They say, heck yeah, that's huge. All day long, are you kidding? Here's Eric Banner now with Orofice at first. Mike Orofice delivers the RBI, first pitch swinging. And it's down the first base line and just barely out of play. On the season, that was RBI number 18 for Mike Orofice. Woo! Boy, first year man with the Pacifics, has just been aces, Alex. He's behind the dish, he's been great. He's got a really powerful arm and a quick and very quick pop time. Boehner, 0-1, Garcia comes home and a slider is taken. Nothing in two. Chase Fontaine is on deck. Here's the 0-2. Oh, and Painter goes down looking on a fastball is a little bit inside. However, the Pacifics get a little something going here in the bottom of the first inning. Four hits and three runs. Coming up for the Stompers in the top of the second inning, it will be Joel Carranza, Steve Renato, and Marshall McDonald, the four, five, six hitters. Hey, it's three nothing San Rafael. When we come back, top two right here on Marin TV. We'll be right back. Charles Window and Door Living Room, located on the third base side of the diamond. Now 
Dodge in our Kansas patio furniture and take advantage of the VIP window from the Defined Cellar Barrel Room. To book your stay in the Charles Window Door Living Room, visit our Barrier Security Ticket Room outside the front gate or go on point at PacificSpaceBall.com. Leading off the top of the second, for Sonoma, designated hitter, number seven, Noel Corona. Well, welcome back, everybody. Here we are in the second inning. After the Pacifics did what they really needed to do there, Alex, and that is establish the tone of the game by picking up three there in the bottom of the first. For the visiting stompers is Joel Carranza, the DH. Well, I think... That's kind of desperation mode. You've got to set the tone in each of these games, and they were able to put three in the bottom of the first. Carranza's batting 254. That came right overhead. That was right behind him. We had the July 4th close call. Yeah. I think that just topped it. That one might have been closer. Oh, my goodness. It's the one area where we're exposed on the straight up foul ball and Karan's almost got us two strikes on him and he breaks his bat and lifts one into shallow right field for a base hit so Karan's is aboard and Steve Renato will bat with a man on and nobody out now Renato is batting 274. He's got two home runs, but 30 RBIs leading the Pacific Association. And he's been a Pacific killer. And he's first pitch swinging, and he hooks one down the left field line, and he breaks his bat. Consecutive pitches, consecutive broken bats. Renato with a strike on him. He'll be followed by Marshall McDonald. We're in the top of the second inning, and it's a 3 nothing ball game in favor of the good old Pacifics. And the good old Pacifics must win tonight. The three teams that top the Pacific Association are so close. And the Pacifics need to win all three as Renato cues this one third base side and He's got two strikes on him. The third baseman, Renato, who had the line drive pop out of his glove that was absolutely roped by Michael Hoba. In the bottom of the first, a 72-mile-an-hour slider is low. That was a good pitch from DeJesus. Boehner, brilliant job framing it just on the outer half. That's where you want an 0-2 pitch to go. That makes Renato definitely think about what's coming next. 40 hits in 146 at-bats for Renato. And Jesus gets him swinging as Banner comes up showing. And that's a, a big strikeout because that's exactly what he needed. Unproductive, can't move Carranza over. And here's Marshall McDonald with one away. The Admirals release McDonald. And the skip, Serrano, brought him on to the table. And in the, his first three games as a stomper, he's played fairly well for him. And a breaking ball is swung on a miss by Marshall McDonald. 
first strike. Jaime Del Valle is on, and McDonald batting 250. One home run and one RBI in just three games, and he swings at a breaking ball in the dirt. And De Jesus is bringing it. I mean, he's nasty tonight. That's not the first stomper to swing at a breaking ball in the dirt. In fact, that's about the fourth time that one of the stompers has swung at a ball that's not even reached home plate. So that tells me that it's got a pretty nasty bite to it. And he fouls one down the first baseline. At least two pitchers are one, two in ERA in the association. So they're squaring off, both of them sub two, five. And when De Jesus has a, a lot of snap to that breaking ball, it just falls off the table. Really tough for hitters to pick up. McDonald takes across the knees, one and two, and I'm not sure where that missed. From our angle, it looked good, but it must have been inside a little bit. So the one, two, and De Jesus would love to get McDonald here on strikes. Last thing he wants to do is move Carranza over. Carranza away from first, and he does get him with a 63 mile an hour curveball. Two away. So a broken bat single for Carranza to lead off things, and De Jesus mows down Renato and McDonald. Catcher number eight, Jaime Del Valle. Jaime Del Valle now the catcher. Will make his way up, and you were talking about Aritz Garcia, the shortstop, having been released by the Stompers just about a week ago, which I found very surprising. I mean, he was batting well over 300. And down the third base line. <laughs> and our scorekeeper over there jumped out of the way at just the last instant. He's got on one of the funky wigs that the Pacifics are going to be giving away over the weekend. I can understand why he's so happy, because if he doesn't get out of the way, yeah, he's, he's down for the count. For sure. One strike now on Jaime De Valle, and this is a fly ball in the shallow left. It falls, and Kiriakos grabs it and fires it to second base, where Chase Fontaine was waiting. Well, Carranza took a big turn around second, and they were almost able to pick him off. But Carranza dives back in, and Del Valle is safe at first. Carranza safe at second. There's our guy with the funky wig. When Del Valle turned and hit the foul ball, he almost picked that guy off with the wig. So if you want one of those blue wigs, and I'm sure everybody watching does, come down over the weekend. Alex will have one. How about that? Well, what happens if us two did a game with the blue wigs? Oh, well, I guarantee we'll have them. Two runners on, two down. Reed Chenworth stands in and takes a breaking ball, strike one. Chenworth, batting 291, is no slouch in the eight hole, that's for sure. He's got four home runs and 18 RBIs. TJ Gavlik is on deck. De Jesus. Needs to get him right here. Carranza away from second. Oh, and he popped it back at De Jesus who couldn't handle it. Kiriakos bare hands it, fakes the throw to first in hopes of Carranza taking a big turn. So it was right back to De Jesus and he just couldn't handle it. Chenworth is aboard with an infield hit. And once that got away from De Jesus, there was gonna be no play for Kiriakos. He just slowed the ball down too much for Kiriakos to come in charging. And if De Jesus lets that go, it's an easy play for Fontaine. But that's a play I think De Jesus is saying he's gonna make. There's our man with the wig again. Well, he's getting a lot of airtime on Marin TV. This is great. TJ Gavlik now, the nine hole hitter with the bags jammed and two down, a breaking ball away. 1-0. Matt Hibbert's on deck. Yeah, he's got the funky wig and the funky moves, too. He's getting down now. Showing some moves. Look at this guy. Not bad. Gavlik batting 273 and a slow chopper first base side and just trickles foul. 
one and one. We'll keep you updated on what's going on with the guy with the wig as the game progresses. He's happy. He's just excited. Hey, Pacifics are up three. I think everybody here is happy and excited. I know I am. 2-7-3 batter is Gavlik. Two home runs and 11 RBIs. DeJesus, the big lefty, stands tall. Bases loaded, long fly ball to right field. Hoba to his right. He's got it. Well, <laughs> three hits there in the top of the second for the Stompers, but no one across. And the Pacifics are able to hold them off as Gavlin goes down on a fly ball to right, leaving the leadoff batter, Matt Hibbert, on deck. We'll go to the bottom of the second inning now here on Marin TV. It'll be the 8-9-1 batters, Chase Fontaine, Evan Boyd, and David Kiriakos coming up in the bottom of the second, 3-0 Pacifics, right here on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 San Rafael Pacifics. We'll be right back. And you'll win a great prize from Joe's. Who is the only player to win the All-Star Game Most Valuable Player and the World Series Most Valuable Player in the same year? Once again, if you know the answer, head down to the Jackson's Cardinal Guest Services desk and find your prize. Yes, San Rafael Pacifics would like to welcome our fans from Bankerville. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
tall infielder. Squares to bunt. Pulls up for a ball. Boyd with one home run and 14 RBIs. He's batting 298. But more impressively, 421 in the last week. Now he squares and bunts one on the third base line. It's gloved by Renato, who almost booted it, but is able to hang with it and get Boyd, but Fontaine is sacrificed over to second, and that's exactly what Dan DePace was looking to do. And he knows how important manufacturing runs is against Garcia. He knows they already have three, but any type of scenario where you can move a runner into scoring position, DePace is gonna take advantage of it. Of course, Dan DePace, the manager of the San Rafael Pacifics in his first year, and now the top of the order. David Kiriakos, who grounded out to Steve Renato at third, his first at bat. Has a chance to make up for that. And he squares, and it gets away from Del Valle for an instant, but not far enough away for Chase Fontaine to make his way down to third base. Fontaine holds steady at second. The Pacifics with five hits already. And we're only in the bottom of the second. Garcia takes a long look back to Fontaine. And a fastball is high. 2-0 and oh to Kiriakos. Zach Pace is on deck. Pace is already one for one on the night with a run scored. Kiriaka swings at a slider, two and one. That's how good Garcia is. Kiriakos is thinking, hey, I've worked myself into a fastball count. Garcia comes with the breaking ball, and it just fell right off once it hits a home plate. Kiriakos, 214 batter with one home run and 15 RBIs. Takes inside, three and one. Now a walk here. Theoretically, wouldn't be the worst thing in the world for Sonoma, as it would set up the double play. I doubt Garcia is thinking that way, though, as most pitchers are reluctant to put anybody on for any reason, strategically or otherwise. Renato gloves the soft ground ball, and there are two away. So Kiriakos consecutively grounds out to the third baseman, Renato. And with two down, here's Zach Pace. Pace, a three-year man of the Pacifics, is loved by everyone he meets. A smart guy, too. Got his master's up at Sonoma State in kinesiology. I, I talked to him before the game, and he takes a fastball upstairs, 1-0. I said, all right, Zach, three games to go. Must win. And he says, I don't want to give you a stock answer, but it really comes down to one pitch at a time, one game at a time, one at bat at a time. And a fastball's away, 2-0. and oh. He said, I just am reluctant to think any further ahead than that. I've got to keep it right here, right now. I do exactly what I can on every single pitch. And, of course, it makes a lot of sense. Here's the 2-0 with Santana on deck. A fastball is swung on and missed, 2-1. Well, who are the type of players that tell you that? Usually winners. And when you have a mindset dialed in, one pitch, one at bat, one game at a time, usually that leads to victories. And that's a scenario where you need right now. You need three of them. Pace with one home run and 18 RBIs. And he hits a line drive softly over to Gavlik, who spears it. And Pace is down a line drive over to four. Leaving Ravel Santana on deck. Well, we're two innings into it. And the Pacific's lead is still three for the Stompers, who are 21 and 15, and in first place in the Pacific Association. 
It'll be the top of the order. Matt Hibbert, Glenn Walker, and Jace Ray here in the top of the third. Three nothing in favor of San Rafael. Alex and I will be back in just a moment right here on, on Marin TV's coverage of the San Rafael Pacifics here in 2014. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Third inning here in San Rafael. Boy, that picker pie contest was something else. Our, thanks to Greg Lockenauer, who was such a, a good sport, having his daughters come out and nail him with the pies. <laughs> that was great. That might have been Almost the best ever. Absolutely pummeled him with the pies. Matt Hibbert's going to lead things off of the Stompers. A fastball. Is taken ball for a strike. Boy, that looked outside. Giants fan in the house. Yep. Hibbert hammers one over to short. Kiriakos is up with it. And there's one away. Glenn Walker now. Walker, of course, who was caught stealing to end things back in the first. We got absolutely pegged by DeJesus. And once Walker took off from first, DeJesus flipped it over to Orofice, who went on to Fontaine, who ran him down and tagged him. One away, and Jace Ray's on deck. Walker has just been acquired by the Stompers, and he takes a fastball for a strike. And I think when he took his trip back into the dugout, he might have gotten an earful because you can't afford those mistakes. At this type of juncture in the season, Stompers are fighting for that first half championship. Can't get picked off. All they need is the one win to knock the Pacifics out. Walker takes now one and one. Only six games in for Walker. He only has one RBI. Four walks, two strikeouts. Lefty on righty. And statistically, it favors the hitter in this situation. A fastball is taken, and Walker takes a walk. He really is unhappy with the call. One and two with one away here in the top of the third inning. In the dirt, and Boehner scoots over and hangs on to it. Not that it really would have mattered. Nobody's on base. But instinctively... If you're a catcher, you, I think you jump in the way of just about anything you can. One, two with Ray on deck. Walker slashes one into right field. It gets down. Hova comes up with it. The throw to first. Oh, just missed him. And that's 
a play that only a guy like Michael Hoba can pull because Hoba has the strongest arm on the team. And it was in shallow right, and Hoba almost gunned him out. The throw was a little bit high. But had it been on line and Orofiche able to stre uh, stretch a little bit, I think Hoba would have had a real chance. But as it stands, Glenn Walker has a base hit. And the Stompers have a little something going here. And he kind of had that high fastball, and he did well with it to serve it in the right field. But Hoba trying to take a stab and throw him out. Here's Jace Ray up and in. 1-0 with Joel Carranza on deck. Ray with a fly ball to Santana back in the first. Batting 3-23. And he popped him up. Kiriakos is short. And he's got it two away. And here's Carranza, the cleanup batter. So with two down, DeJesus is close to getting out of this thing. Although I'm reluctant to say that because the last thing I want to do is jinx him. The Pacifics must win all three of these games. And they've not yet swept the Stompers this year. Here's the throw over to first. And Walker's back in plenty of time. Carranza, batting in the cleanup spot, has nine home runs. And he popped him up. And Orofice calls everybody off. And he's got it. And the Pacifics are able to get out of it with just the one hit. Right, by Glenn Walker and the Pacifics still lead by a score of three to nothing no runs on four hits for the visiting stompers three runs on five hits for San Rafael when we come back in the bottom of the third inning it'll be Ravel Santana he'll be followed by Mike Calhoba and Jeremy Williams the three four five batters for San Rafael We'll be back in just a moment right here on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. Fans, the Pacifics are here at home all this week. And we have a jam-packed schedule of promotions and events. Tomorrow's a special day game dedicated to the kids. Kids 12 and under getting free. First pitches scheduled for 12 noon. Thursday is another tailgate Thursday sponsored by Kings 881 Club. Fans in attendance will receive new disco rigs courtesy of CMS and there'll be a free game performance by Save Doc and the Optimistics. As with every tailgate Thursday, there'll be happy hour prices on food and drink before the game from 5.30 until 6.30. This weekend is the Sonic BMW weekend featuring the future prospects skills challenge on Friday night and the Jose Canseco Home Run Challenge on Sunday. To purchase tickets for all this week and the rest of the Pacific season, visit the Park Air Security Ticket booth at the main entry gate or go online at PacificBaseball.com. everybody well three nothing for San Rafael and things could be a lot worse if you're a Pacifics fan no one's comfortable yet but it's a nice way to get started Ravel Santana leads off and he takes a strike Michael Hoba is on deck and Jeremy Williams is in the hole Sonoma in the house. And defensively, Reed Chenworth in left and Jace Ray in center with Matt Hibbert over there in right field. We're in the bottom of the third inning. And Ravel Santana takes strike two. Santana in the last week 
batting 320. Which is trending upward from his 286 overall. Here's the 0 2. Inside, 1 and 2. And we'll see how Garcia responds right here. He's going to face the heart of the order. And if he mows through it, that's going to tell us and be a sign that he's kind of calming down and getting back into his zone. This is just the ninth game that Santana is playing as a Pacific. And he burns one toward first. Going to be a tough play. McDonald up with it. And the covering Garcia can't get there in time. Ravel Santana beats it out. An infield hit. And Michael Hoba is on his way to the hitting area. Speed kills. And Santana was hustling out of the box right from the get-go as he just squibbed it down the first baseline. And Garcia didn't cover as fast as he normally should have. McDonald was looking for him to flip. And once Garcia was there to receive it, Rafael Santana had already beaten the throw. Fans, tonight's telecast is made possible by the Association of Marin TV and Dominican University of California. Mike Calhoba stands in. A 255 hitter, Hoba, a three year man of the Pacific's. Four home runs and 28 RBIs. Of course, his 28th came back in the first. Takes for a ball, 1 0. Santana, the runner at first, and he golfs at a late breaking slider, 1 and 1. Jeremy Williams is on deck. Here in the bottom of the third. One one and Hoba fouls it off of his own heel. Albert Hartick. That was a big hack. He was sitting breaking ball there. Please head down to the Pacific's first base dugout area. Hoba loves the high cheese. He loves a high fastball. But anything up in the zone, he'll go after. Williams on deck and Hoba's in one and two. And a fly ball to center. Coming in is Jace Ray. One away. So Hoba goes down quietly here. And Jeremy Williams will hit next. Now batting for your Pacifics and sponsored by Jackson's Hardware. Jackson's is celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. It's designated hitter Jeremy Williams. So Williams, they still affectionately call Williams the new guy. But, of course, Williams has been around now. This is his 26th game. <laughs> but he joined after the club had played eight games. And so the fans all started to refer to him affectionately as the new guy. Ball one. And the name stuck. And he rips into one. It could be two. It bounces against Walker at short. Hit him in the throat. And he's holding his neck, in fact, right now. He was able to get the sliding Ravel Santana at second for the second out. But because it bounced off of his neck, they were unable to turn two. So Jeremy Williams is aboard at first after the fielder's choice. Two away. They're going to check if Walker's yeah. okay here. It that was him, a wicked hop. It hit him right in the throat. It ran up his glove and hit him right in the throat square. And after he uh, underhanded it to the covering Gavlik at second base, he went back to his own throat and was kind of poking at it and feeling it. Our out-of-town scoreboard has the Admirals over the Pittsburgh medal in the top of the third inning. They're in the same situation as the Pacifics. They got to sweep the medal. That's absolutely right. In fact, the Admirals and the Pacifics are both a full game back of the Stompers. And there are, we were doing all the math before the game. Vinny Longo and Mike Shapiro and myself kind of doing the math. And there's a mathematic possibility that 
there's a three-way tie. Here's Orofice, who takes up and away for a ball. Two down here in the bottom of the third. And if there's a three-way tie, then, well, there's a, a bunch of different ways the ties, whether it's two games or three games, there's a bunch of different ways that the ties would be settled. As the ground ball to McDonald is taken, three unassisted to end things. But the point is that unless the Pacifics win all three of these games, they are at the mercy of what the other teams do. Now, if the Pacifics do win all three of these games, they are the champions of the Pacific Association because though they are tied with Vallejo and if Vallejo sweeps the medal well that would mean that the Pacifics and Vallejo are tied but because the Pacifics have beaten Vallejo more times than not throughout the first half of the season that would entitle the Pacifics to the championship series at the end of the second half. So we have three games, including tonight, to go in the first half, the winner of which is guaranteed a spot in the championship series. All right. I hope that makes a lot that. of sense. That's the stage right there. I think That's that makes job. sense. Did, was that clear enough for you? Crystal. Got it. Perfect. And uh, by the way, if you want one of the funky blue wigs like we showed earlier, Tuesday is the day to come, the disco wig. Alex is going to have one, and I'll be rocking it. I absolutely guarantee that you'll have one on. <laughs> We're going to go top of the fourth inning, and coming up for the Stompers will be the five, six, seven hitters in Steve Renato, Marshall McDonald, and Jaime Del Valle. Alex and I will be right back right here on Marin TV and their coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. fourth in this three nothing ball game in favor of the home team the San Rafael Pacifics he takes up and away for a ball one and oh he'll be followed by Marshall McDonald and Jaime Del Valle Renato with a strikeout back in the second inning takes inside two and oh Ryan DeJesus the big left hander on the mound that two nine three ERA Standing pat. Three nothing. All of them earned. And he skies it. First base line. Orofice in foul ground. One away. Coming into the ball game. Two main hitters to contain. For the Stompers were Renato and Ray. So far, DeJesus has him at 0 for 4. You got to tip your cap to the ace right there. He's doing his job. Here's Marshall McDonald, who also struck out back in the second. Batting 250. First pitch, third base line. Diving forward is Evan Boyd. He can't come up with it. And McDonald's going to be given a hit. 
Get to know the folks at Bank of Berlin. And even though Boyd couldn't come up with it and try to shoot down a seed and get McDonald, he kept it in the infield and only held him to 90 feet. That's a very good point. If Boyd doesn't get to that, Santana's playing way off the line out there in left field. And without question, McDonald would have turned first and gotten into second base. But since Evan Boyd did die for it and was able to knock it down, as you said, kept him away from that second base bag. Jaime Del Valle now. Pops one up and just a dramatic strike, nothing in one. Reed Chenworth is on deck. Del Valle, the catcher, is batting 350 and leading the team. And Del Valle and McDonald were teammates with the Admirals, and now they find themselves teammates here with the Stompers. Just their 10th game for Del Valle here. And he knocks one into left field, a line drive past the diving Kiriakos and consecutive hits. And once again, Ryan DeJesus has his hands full. And Kiriakos has a lot of range. And if that ball doesn't kick up off the edge of the grass, he might have a chance at it. But Del Valle with a good piece of hitting to go the other way. So Bader takes a quick trip to the mound and has a word with DeJesus. Reed Chenworth now, who had the infield hit, which just got past DeJesus just barely and back in the second inning. And on that infield hit, he moved two runners up. But none of them were able to score. And a slider across the knees is taken for a strike. Chenworth batting 2-9-1 with four home runs and 18 RBIs. Twelve doubles. And he swings and over to Orofice at first, who backhands it. And he moves everybody up once again. It's all a productive out for Chenworth. And that ball had so much top spin on it, it almost got under Orofice's glove. He was able to steal in his athletic position and make the play. But here's a big at bat for Gavlik. Has an Orofice been something over there at first base? Just absolutely incredible. Gold glove. Yeah, not to mention he's batting over 300. So he's uh, he's the complete package at Orofice over at first. Here's TJ Gavlik, the fly ball over to Hoba. His one at bat earlier, 0 for 1. And he takes a fastball up. 1-0, two down here. In the top of the fourth inning. Horn and Swan, three nothing. Sander fell. Popped him up. Boehner back, throws the mask away. And right in front of the grandstands, hauls it in. Gavlik goes down the pop up to Boehner. And Alex, once again, DeJesus gets out of it. Not that it was a big jam, but it was certainly something to think about. And we'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Excuse me. And it's 3-0 when we come back on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. We'll be right back. Marin TV is made possible by the generous support of Good Earth. 
dedicated to the health and sustainability of our community since 1969. the bottom of the fourth inning and the Pacific still lead by a score of three to nothing. Eric Boehner will lead off. He struck out looking back in the first. Boehner a 3-10 hitter. One home run and six RBIs. There we are. Yours truly. It's my partner Alex uh, with the peace sign. I don't know where that camera is. It must be down the third base line. That's kind of a cool angle. I like it. Boehner stands in and takes low. Boehner, the backup catcher, but is making a, a real case for himself as he takes a ball with his ability to throw runners out. And now the fastball is a little up in the zone. 2-0. Well, you've got to have all the tools as a catcher. And defensively is where managers look at first, and Boehner's got a cannon and he can block anything, so he's set. Three doubles and Boehner skies one. Left field line, looking up, Chenworth up against the wall. Into second, sliding, and it gets away from Gavlik, and Boehner stays put at second. But Boehner has a double. How and about that? that, just when I said Boehner has three doubles, wham, he hits another one, make it four. And he's seen it so well. Challenge fastball from Garcia and he one-hops the wall, and he can do it all, and he's deserving of his playing uh, time. Pacific, baseman, Fontaine. Fontaine, who's one for one on the night, the hit over to right field. Left stranded at second base, back in the second, batting 287. Two home runs for the three-year Pacific. First pitch swinging up the middle. Diving forward is Gavlik. He can't get to it. Coming around third and scoring is Boehner. Here's the throw home. He's hurt. Fontaine not waiting around. Garcia challenges him after giving up the double, and Fontaine jumps all over it. And Ray was coming home all the way. And, Mc, and Fontaine read it off the bat, and he didn't stop at first, rounded it, and he was easily able to take second. Now and they're getting to Garcia. Four nothing in favor of San Rafael. Garcia with that 2.33 ERA is in a place where I'm sure he's not very, with which he is not very familiar. And the first pitch to Evan Boyd is taken for a strike. Sacrifice bunt from Boyd back in the second. And the count is 1-0. and Inside now, 2-0. and To the very tall, slender third baseman. Boyd batting 2-9-8. And he... Gets one up the middle. It's backhanded by Gavlik, but he muffs it. And stopping at third is Fontaine. And that was going to be a tough play for Gavlik, ranging to his right. Had the tough hop kind of come up at him at mid-thigh, and it ricocheted off his glove. And Boyd was hustling out of the box, and he might have beat that out anyways. And we could just sense the intensity and the urgency. It's just starting out in the ball game, and even in the crowd at the yard. This is kind of a new team that we're seeing the, over in the past weekend against the Admirals. And it's showing. One run in here. It's 4 nothing. First pitch to Kiriakos is fouled away. 
You'll notice our graphic in the top left corner of your television screen. It says 3 nothing, But in fact, the score is 4 nothing. There's one strike. Thank you. There's one strike on Kiriakos. And a line drive into center field. And that's going to bring home Fontaine. And that makes it 5 to nothing. And you can see Garcia's frustration. He's missing location. He usually has spot on command and he's even pitches up. Kiriakos jumped all over it. Here's Zach Pace who got the whole thing started back in the first. Pace with a scorching shot into left field. Had the first hit of the night for the Pacifics who have now put 10 hits on the board. Ray Serrano is going to take a walk out to the mound for the first time tonight. And Serrano, of course, the manager of the Stompers. And Gabriel Garcia, the ace of the staff. And it looks like Daniel Castillo was warming up in the Stompers pen. The right-handed sidewander is Castillo. And the Pacifics have seen Castillo earlier in the season. And it looks like he's getting warmed up just as quickly as he possibly can. The look in the eye of Gabriel Garcia, you can see there is he's not very happy with whatever it was that Ray Serrano said in the foreground of your television screen was the back of Dan DePace, the manager. And Jaime Del Valle, the catcher, has made his way back behind the dish. Zach Pace, who back in the first inning with that single, was the first of the 10 hits tonight. So he's one for two, hitting a line drive to Gavlik in his second at bat in the second inning. Pace, first pitch swinging, and it's hammered to McDonald, who the line drive is caught. And then he steps on the bag to double up Kiriakos. So the double play and Pace is gone on one pitch. Three unassisted and then the double play makes it two outs and here's Ravel Santana. And if you're Garcia, that's exactly what you were trying to get was a double play. And Kiriakos had a decent lead once Garcia came to the plate and there was no way he was gonna, able to recover to try to get back to first. Just the ninth game for Santana. And the first pitch to him is low for a ball. In those nine games, Santana batting 286 with three RBIs. Tonight is the ninth game. Michael Hoba is on deck, two away. Here in the bottom of the fourth. 5 nothing, San Rafael. Fast ball away. 2-0. and Garcia's minutes are numbered. There's no question about it. A, a 2-3-3 ERA. And this and is the most hits he's given up all year. When you've given up five runs, all of them earned as Santana swings and now it's two and one. When you've given up five, you're not familiar with this part of the game and so uncomfortable are you that Ray Serrano's gonna do well to get him out of there. And a shot over to shortstop, that's Glenn Walker right, and that'll it's do it. So Ravel Santana back. goes down right, six. To three. To three. We know grass. And Hoba's left on deck. The Pacific sent six to the plate and got two more across. And it's five nothing. More importantly, or perhaps not more importantly, but interestingly enough, the Pacifics have gotten ten hits so far tonight. And that's always a good sign. Anytime you have ten hits, Alex, you gotta be happy with ten hits. Against the number one guy in the league, ERA-wise. That's right. And against the first place team. Against whom you must win these three games. All three of them. The Pacifics must sweep in order to make it to the championship series. 
to be assured of a slot in the championship series. Now they could win the second half and get in, but you'd like to win it now and know that you're in and then go for the championship on your own. Because if you win both halves, there is no championship series. You're the champ. And of course, whoever wins the first half will be thinking that way. We'll go to the top of the fifth inning and it will be Matt Hibbert, Glenn Walker, and Jace Ray when we come back right here on Maroon TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. Matt Hibbert to lead it off for the Stompers in the top of the fifth. As the first pitch to him is outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes to Hibbert. 0 for 2 on the night. Shows bunt and takes low, 2 and 0. Hibbert coming into tonight was hitting 266. And he had a three RBI game back last series against the medal where the Stompers were able to complete the sweep. DeJesus winds, and he has a strike on the outside corner, two and one. Walker is on deck. As DeJesus looks in. 2-1 is skied. Santana takes a couple steps in, and he puts it away. One out. So here is Glenn Walker, the new replacement for Ritz Garcia at shortstop. He's out of Jackson State. And in 2012, he was playing for the Fullerton Flyers. And once he joined the the Western American Baseball League. It went down, shut down, no longer continued on, didn't form. And so Walker was out of place to play. And so Saraner contacted him and said, hey, we got no Garcia anymore. We need a shortstop. And he kind of emulates the same game style as Garcia with good speed, high average. And he's done... A magnificent job in replacement. The 1 0 is in there for a strike. One ball and one strike. And all Walker has done since he's gotten here has gone 7 for 20 with one RBI and two stolen bases. And he's hit well in that two hole as he swings and misses. It'll be 1 and 2. Ray to follow. But during that last week's span, Walker has also tied for the lead in runs on this team as he spurs it foul. It'll stay in one and two. So Serrano has been very impressed with Walker's production. Out-of-town scoreboard it is still 4-0 Admirals. 
They are on the road at Pittsburgh. Here's the one, two, and a dribbler up the middle. Tough play for Fontaine, and there will be no throw. As Walker is three for three with an infield hit. Now batting for Sonoma, number 99, Jace Ray. So that will set the table for Jace Ray. And earlier in the Dan DePay show, this is the guy that he wanted to contain. He is the hottest hitter in the Pacific Association, batting 478 over his last seven. One bomb, seven RBIs. He's 11 for 23. Tonight, DeJesus has got him at 0-2 as he takes a strike across the belt, 0-1. But Ray has been a Pacific killer. 381, eight ribbies, and six stolen bases as DeJesus checks over. And earlier in the year, Ray was the, lead, the leadoff man for Serrano. And he kept driving in runs, and so he has been dropped into the number three hole, and he has produced. He takes outside. One ball and one strike to Ray. But he's fourth in the league in average. As he looks at a strike, two and two. And he's creeping up on Tillman Pugh in the stolen base leader as he's in third. Hughes leads the league, of course, with 23 stolen bases. Tim Battle right behind him. And then there's Jace Ray with 17. One-two pitch to Ray. Curveball up the middle. Diving is Fontaine. He can't get it. Pace gets to it quickly. And Jace Ray is one for three. And the reason why... He was dropped down into the third hole was to hit in front of this man, Carranza. He leads the league in home runs and second in RBIs. So when you got a threat of a 3-4 combo in Ray and Carranza, that really sets the table for the rest of the order. So it will be Walker at second, Ray at first. DeJesus has been in and out of trouble all night. He's given up nine hits, but no runs to show for it. Carranza, only 222 over the last week as he takes a strike at the knees. But he has been the lone power threat for the Stompers. But the Pacifics have his number. Only four for 36 when he's played San Rafael. And only two RBIs. So the staff for the Pacifics have done well to contain Carranza. Ray and Renato on the other hand, not so much. They have done a number on the Pacifics. Five nothing. Walker at second. Ray at first. Infield at double play depth. Boyd hugging the line at third. On the ground, up the middle, could be a pair. Fontaine steps on the back, over to Orafiche. Double play. And that is your De Jesus gets out of trouble again. We're going to the bottom of the fifth. It will be Hova, Williams, and Orafiche when we come back. You're watching the 2014 coverage of the Pacifics. My understanding is... The winner of this gets a sweet treat. On your mark, get set, go! Don't forget fans, this is sponsored by Gaspare's Pizza. Authentic Italian style pizza. And there's our winner. Oh wait, the contest continues.
Hard to tell who the winner is in this band. And thank you to Gaspari's Pizza for sponsoring the sumo race. Once again, happy birthday to Nate Martino. We want to remind you fans, you can still bid on a chance to compete in our home run derby this Sunday against Jose Canseco. The contest takes place at noon. Place your bid outside at the main gate or email info at pacificsbaseball.com. Garcia is still in to take the hill, and he will face Mike Kell Hova. Hova had an RBI back in the first. He's one for two. Second in the Pacific Association in RBIs behind Steve Renato. On the ground, in the hole, and a base hit to right field. So Hova not wasting any time, and he's aboard with the leadoff single. That will bring up Jeremy Williams. And he's been up and down for the Pacifics. He had an outstanding first 10 games where he was tearing the leather off the ball. And now he's started to cool down. As a first pitch, he's swinging and fouls it. It will be 0-1. But Williams, over the last week, down to 263. He's got six RBIs and one home run, sitting at 267 on the year as he takes a fastball high, 1-1. One one. Williams, back in the first inning, had that RBI ground out as he swings and misses. One ball and two strikes to Williams. McDonald is holding on over at first. And he got him. So that is Garcia's second strikeout of the night. And it will bring to the plate Mike Orofice. Orofice hitting in the six hole tonight. He's been in the cleanup spot for the majority of the first half. But the pace switching it up, going Santana at three, Hova in the four hole, and then Williams and followed by Orofice. One for two. As he had a base hit RBI single to right. Renato off the line at third. Infield at double play depth. And a breaking ball is at the knees for a strike. Boehner is on deck. Where Afiche's been getting it going. 346 in his last 26 trips to the plate as he takes up and in from Garcia. One ball and one strike. Garcia working quickly from the stretch. On the ground, tough play. Gavlik shovels it over to Walker to first. And he beat it out. Orofice running well. He's got good speed for a first baseman. And he's able to stay out of the double play. Now batting for your Pacific, number 14, Eric Boehner. So here is Eric Boehner, who had that double he crushed over to left field. And over the course of when Boehner has had chances to play, he has marveled. Nine trips this last week, batting 444. Second on the team in average at 310. And he just misses a fastball. and will be 0 and 1. But you can't say enough good things about Boehner, and neither can his teammates or the skipper. 
Great clubhouse guy, military guy, keeps everything in line. And that's what you want, especially from behind the dish. Calls a great game. Here's the 0-1. Across the belt, 0-2. Garcia comes set. Here's the pitch on the ground. Renato charges, bobbles it, and Bader's going to make it. Everybody's safe. And that's going to be an error on Steve Renato. Well, you don't, you, you don't see that too often. That Renato over there is one of those guys that you can count on day in and day out. And he just muffed it. So here is Chase Fontaine. Or Afiche at second. Boehner from first. Trying to make Garcia get deep into this ball game. Trying to throw extra pitches. First pitch is a strike at the knees. 0-1. And, and Fontaine's trying to make him pay for Renato's error. Oh, one to Fatain is in tight, one and one. Fontaine, 287 on the year with two home runs. Seven for his last 13. On the ground, McDonald. He'll take it to the bag himself. And the side is retired. Going to the top of the sixth. It will be Renato, McDonald, and Del Valle. It's 5 nothing Pacifics here on Marin TV. You're watching the 2014 coverage of the San Rafael Pacifics. off for the Stompers here in the top of the sixth. It will be Renato, McDonald, and Del Valle. Renato, 0 for 2 on the night. As he takes a strike. No balls in one strike to Steve Renato. And coming into this ball game, he had seven RBIs alone against the Pacifics with a 290 average. On the ground, in the hole. Boy, he dives. He's got it. The throw to first. Not in time. Is Renato, with good speed, was able to beat it out. And be sure to check out our new Klein Barrel. Boy, that was close. Boy, did everything he could possibly do and was really able or tried to wing it over there but was unable to convert. Boy, he's been great, though, in the, in the hot corner. So Renato will have an infield hit. And here is Marshall McDonald. Coming over from the Admirals after he was released. 
with three games. He's played with the Stompers, 250 with one home run and one RBI. Takes a strike mid-thigh, 0-1. Orofice holding on, Renato at first. Fontaine and Kiriakos up the middle, a double play depth. There's a breaking ball, misses low. One ball and one strike. De Jesus has surrendered 10 hits, but zero runs. Here's the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball. Fontaine, excuse me, pace broke back. And now he comes in, puts it away for the first out of this inning. And Fontaine was thinking about it, but as it floated over the second baseman Fontaine's head, he just decided to let the very trusty center fielder, Zach Pace, take it on our out-of-town scoreboard. The Admirals are over the medal. Tonight, the Pacifics must win if they want to have any chance at taking the first half title, which ends this Thursday. Three games left, including tonight. And the Pacifics must win all three games because the Stompers are in first place. If the Pacifics win all three, they are the champs of the first half, which means they are guaranteed a berth in the championship series in late August. If they don't win all three games, there's no guarantee they're in the championships at all, one and one. And that's where the pressure's at. If they don't take care of business against the Stompers and try to pull off the sweep, it all comes down to the second half. And that pressure will start to build because they thought coming in, that this would be their year to take the first half and the second half. Del Valle, big chopper on the ground here, charging his Kiriakos, it's off his glove. Yeah, it was a, it was a do or die play to Kiriakos. He was gonna have to try and get the short hop, and then he was gonna have a tremendously difficult throw over to first. It was gonna be off balance and deep in the hole. So all he could do is rush it and pray and uh, I guess apparently he didn't pray hard enough <laughs> because it didn't it didn't get the short hop that he was looking for. Another infield hit. Well, sometimes as a middle infielder, you can charge yourself right and do a tough hop. And Kiriakos had to come in as it was a big chopper. Yeah, that's it, a good call. It's maybe exactly what he did. But he couldn't wait back on it. Then he'd have no play anywhere for sure. At least he was trying to get the out. So Del Valle is three for three. Here is Chenworth, and he takes a strike. So uh, though De Jesus has the five-run lead, it hasn't come with, without a little bit of stress here and there. In fact, every inning has been a little stressful on uh, the big lefty. De Jesus takes a peek at second, now comes to the plate. Oh. A bit outside, one ball and one strike. Chenworth against the Pacifics. He's batting 257 with four RBIs. He's got a chance to drive in Renato. Curveball is low, two and one. Oh, that was that was nasty. And that was such a hard biting curveball. You know, sometimes. Alex, and you and I have talked about this on the air plenty of times. You can even throw off the ump if your curveball is that nasty. Even the ump will get deked. And that one looked like it may have been just a little low across the knees, but not by much. Shot in the right field, a base hit. Hova's up with it. Renato is going to hold at third. And a wise decision as Hova throws in a seed to Boehner. And the bases are going to be loaded. Well, all of a sudden, this has turned into a high-stress inning. And I don't know how long a leash Dan DePace is going to give to Jesus. 
He's thrown a lot of pitches and given up 11 hits. It's interesting that the Pacifics have also mounted 11 hits, but have gotten five runs, all of them earned, where the 11 hits for the Stompers thus far have netted the uh, big old goose egg. And they have left eight on base. And that number could continue to tally if TJ Gavlik cannot come up for the Stompers. Boyd is over hugging the line at third. Here's a pitch to Gavlik and it's a little high, one and oh. So the Stompers had previously loaded the bases earlier this ball game and they got it again. Here's a pitch to Gavlik. Just misses, one and one. Excuse me, two balls and no strikes. Renato, Del Valle, and Chenworth. All on the pass for the Stompers. The 2-0 to Gavlik is in there for strike one. That's, that's pretty huge. 3-0 is a lot different under these circumstances than 2-1. Now just a little bit of breathing room as there's a lot of action going on in the Pacific's bullpen. Rogers warming up down in the Pacific's bullpen. 2-1 pitch at the knees, strike two. So DeJesus has worked back from 2-0 to even the count to TJ Gavlik. Gavlik's no slouch at 2-7-3. Two home runs and 11 RBIs, but this is the biggest moment in the game right here, this pitch right now. DeJesus sets and Boehner wants an appeal and there will be no swing three and two so now Dejesus has got to come in one swing of the bat could make a big difference in this game as far as the score is concerned couldn't tie it but could get the Stompers 80% of the way there. Payoff pitch to Gavlik. Popped him up. Santana is under it. It's shallow. Kiriakos now comes over to make the play. And he fires it back into Boehner. And that's a nice play by Kiriakos. Well, for the life of me, I cannot imagine why Kiriakos went out after it. It seemed like it was going to be a really easy play for Ravel Santana in left field, but Kiriakos made a difficult play out of it. Yes, he made a great catch, and subsequently he made a great throw. But why is my question, Alex? Have you an answer? I don't, because he had to run a long way, twice as far as Santana was coming in on that ball. And then I had a quick thought of, is Renato going to tag? Because Kiriakos now had his back turned towards home plate. Exactly. Uh, all the momentum was from Santana to make the throw in. Now Kiriakos had to throw off balance. But no harm, no foul. And Kiriakos just made it a tough play out of a relatively easy one. So here's Matt Hibbert, and he takes a strike. 64 miles an hour to the leadoff batter. Jesus starting off Hibbert with a changeup. And these guys make plays like that. You know, it puts the announcers in under uh, undue stress. <laughs> We're very fragile. Base hit right field. Renato's going to score. Del Valle will score. Going for two is Hibbert, and he's going to make it. Now here comes the throw home, and it's way high as everybody lost track of Chenworth. So Hibbert clears the bases with a double. And finally, DeJesus has been tagged. 
And when you say tag, do you mean somebody hit a sharp line drive with runners in scoring position as opposed to the ball coming in and actually tagging a runner? DeJesus, the pitcher, just left a high fastball, or maybe a little bit of a breaker, it was just hanging, and it was absolutely smoked. And, you know, you put a quality hitter like Hibbert up in that situation. Leadoff guy, loves the pressure. Good hitter, consistent, been seeing the ball very well. And he just absolutely hammered it out into the gap in right and right center field. And, you know, I got to give Chenworth credit there, Alex, for the heads up base running. I really didn't think he was going to come around third and score, but he was going the whole way. And he forced the throw in. I believe it was from Chase Fontaine, the cutoff, after Hova fielded it. And Fontaine airmailed Boehner, the catcher, by a long shot. And it was an easy score at the end of the day by Chenworth. That's a heads-up play by Chenworth. So it's 5-3 now, Pacifics. And things just got interesting. Hibbert is at second. And here is Glenn Walker, who's 3-for-3. Three three. Walker takes a strike at the knees, 0-1. So DeJesus was able to maneuver himself in and out of trouble through five. And finally the Stompers come through with a huge two-out knock from Hibbert. Walker takes a strike. It'll be 0-2. The fans are stunned. 5-0 looks a lot better than 5-3. All coming on one hit. No balls and two strikes to Walker as he stays alive. It'll still be 0-2. Well, the Stompers were battling, and they had out hit the Pacifics up until the fourth inning, and DeJesus had done well to get himself out of jams, and finally, once the Stompers got that hit, it just sucked the life out of the crowd. And now we got a ball game. Big time, and DeJesus needs to get this third out right here. Stop the bleeding. 0-2, curveball on the ground to Boyd. Bobbles it, throws the first in time to get Walker. Evan Boyd with a but big time not before hanger. four hits and three runs come across the plate on Hibbert's double. We're going to the bottom of the sixth where it will be Evan Boyd, Kiriakos, and Pace. When we come back, you're watching the 2014 coverage of the San Rafael Pacifics.
And here is Evan Boyd to lead things off for the Pacifics in the bottom of the sixth. As he takes the first pitch from Garcia low, 1-0. Boyd is one for two as he had an infield hit back in the fourth and a sack bunt in the second. Two balls and no strikes to Boyd. As he fouls him hey, back the over into the Kirby dugout. Two and one. Close, so your youngsters should be heading back to your seats very shortly. Kirby Cove is now closed. Well, in the beginning of the year, it was the debate who was going to play shortstop for the Pacifics. And Dan DePace had a big look at Aritz Garcia, but Boyd played with him in the Winter League on his team. And so he eventually got the nod, and it has paid off in big ways. Boyd just under 300 at 298. And over this last week, he's up at 421, just tearing the cover off the baseball. Eight for 19. It's three and one. Hits it on the ground. McDonald with the stab. We'll take it to the bag himself for the first out. That would have been nice to, <laughs> to get Boyd with a line drive right there, get on base and turn it right around. What the Pacifics would love to do right now is throw one back up on the board. The last thing they want to do is allow the Stompers to keep that momentum going, Alex. You know, picking up three when you're down five. That's gigantic, but getting right back out, uh, getting your guys out and off the field and in back into the clubhouse as quickly as possible, that's even bigger. And over this last weekend, when the Stompers were in Pittsburgh, they were down in two games, and they worked their way back. So their bats have been hot, and they know how to get back in ball games. The 1-0 to Kyriakos is high, 2-0. But that's exactly what... Garcia is trying to do, get his team, get the sticks back up quickly. Big chopper. Walker's got on a high hop. He's got to hurry. And they got him. Kiriakos can't believe it. As he thought he beat the throw out. Well, from here, not just because we're Pacifics guys, from here it really looked like he had the foot on the bag in plenty of time. Walker did not field it cleanly. And Kiriakos is fast, and that's an understatement. He's one of the fastest guys in the league. And I thought he had a, I thought he had an infield hit. I thought he beat it out. And he's still adamant about that call. Well, when Walker field, fielded that play at short, he still had half the baseball sticking out of his glove like a snow cone. Right. And it was a tough play. Pace takes a strike at the knees, 0-1. but I'm not entirely sure that the umpire had the best of angles as Kyriakos was coming down the line. That's one of the flaws in the two umpire system. Pace shows bunt and he whiffs at it. It'll be 0-2. Shout out to Scott Pace. Of course, Zach's dad who attends a lot of the games and does a lot of work for the Pacific's players and refurbishing their gloves, a Vietnam vet. and It's an overall great guy. He's the man. Oh yeah, I know he he had a he uh, had you completely. He had me in awe. Yeah, in awe of his incredible Willie Mays uh, room. Back at the house, I couldn't believe it when he was showing me the panorama of that whole room. Yeah, everything Willie Mays from rookie cards to jerseys to signed memorabilia. Right, unbelievable. Yeah, if you want to know about Willie Mays, Zach Pace's dad, Scott, is the guy. It'll be two balls and two strikes to Pace. There is another guy I know that has a pretty great Willie Mays room. It's, it's not up at the level of uh, Scott Pace, but a guy named John Crystal over in uh, Santa Venetia who has a heck of a collection, too. I mean, everything you can possibly think of. Got him. So Pace strikes out, and that will retire the side. And, you know, people in this part of the world love Willie Mays. They love Willie Mays as much as they love anybody. Absolutely. And you almost think when these men or women have these 
huge collections of all this signed memorabilia or yeah. of one player. You wonder how long you've been doing this, and they've been doing it for decades. That's absolutely right. Unbelievable. We're going to the top of the seventh. It's 5-3 Pacifics. You're watching the 2014 coverage of the San Rafael Pacifics on Marin TV. We'll be right back. Marin TV is made possible by the generous support of Good Earth. Dedicated to the health and sustainability of our community since 1969. Top of the seventh here at Albert Park. It will be Jace Ray to lead it off for the Stompers. DeJesus is still out there. Chuggy Rogers is still warming up in the bullpen. He's ready to go when they need him. Ray one for three as he takes a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Maybe we'll do the whole game with just this camera angle on us. Oh, maybe not. A little broadcaster perspective. Well, see know. all our emotions and how we go crazy up in the booth. Exactly. I was thinking maybe this would be broadcaster day. Hey, maybe when we have the wigs. <laughs> or I have the wig. <laughs> Curveball, Ray out in front, 0-2. I can't wait to get the funky wig. I think that's what they're called, the funky wig. I think that's what we should call it. No, that is what oh, it's called. the funky wig? It's called the funky wig. And that's going to be I Tuesday. Tuesday, if you come out of the ballpark, you're going to get your own funky wig. And we showed it earlier in the broadcast. Our Marin TV camera people were right on top of it. Oh, and two to Ray. To Jesus kicks and delivers. Got him. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. How about that? So got that him, I got him on the high hard one, Alex. And great pitch sequence there. Mixing from off speed and got him with the Ladies cheese. And, and that is his third job, strikeout of the team. night. Let's give a nice round of applause to our bat boys. Boehner's going to go out and talk to DeJesus briefly. Nice job, guys. As here is Joel Carranza. As here comes to pace. And I think that might have been it with the lefty-lefty matchup, DeJesus against Ray. Got to be. Remind you, fans, once more that you can bid on a chance to compete in our home run derby this Sunday against Jose Canseco. The well, the infield's all around, as you can see, at uh, the, the pitcher's mound. Kiriakos there on the left, and Chase Fontaine just in front of him. Evan Boyd, number 17, in the foreground with Boehner, the catcher. And DePace is going to leave him in. Nope, that's going to do it. So DeJesus exits. After going six and a third, allowing three runs on 12 hits with three strikeouts. Dan Rogers is coming in. We'll be right back after he's done getting juiced up. You're watching the 2014 coverage of the Pacifics here on Marin TV.
watching Marin TV. Marin TV is made possible by the generous support of Tamil Pius Union High School District Community Education. So Rodgers will face Carranza. That will be the matchup righty on righty. On the season, Rodgers, the, the junk baller, and I say that with all due respect, believe me. He's uh, 24 and two-thirds innings pitch. Rodgers giving up 27 hits, 19 strikeouts, and nine walks. Rodgers has a 2-0 record the big right-hander Rogers big curveball in there for a strike he's got to be careful against Carranza nine home runs he's gotten in the cleanup spot oh he took Chase Rice deep who is another member of the San Rafael Pacific's bullpen back in Sonoma Rogers this time gasses him up. Three pitches, three strikes. And Carranza goes down. And here is Steve Renato. That's two strikeouts in a row. Of course, the first one was DeJesus. And now the second one, Carranza. Breaking ball misses away. 1-0 and to Renato. And this was a big shutdown inning for the Pacifics. Garcia had gotten his club back into the dugout quickly. And the Pacifics, Rogers and the combination with the Jesus, have gotten two quick outs on back to back strikeouts. Two balls and no strikes to Renato. Rogers won't out overpower you with fastballs, but he can junk you. At the knees for strike one. And that's not to say that he can't throw hard. I mean, that was 77 miles an hour, a little two-seamer. And especially of how slow his breaking balls are, that fastball has a good 10 to 12 mile an hour differential. Renato fouls it back. It'll be two and two. He's also one of the two Pacific's pitchers that actually has a real changeup. Rogers on the out-of-town scoreboard now in the bottom of the sixth inning. The Admirals lead the medal 9-0. Why is that significant? Because that plays a role in this championship series. And the championship series I refer to as Roger receives a breaking ball in high is that there are three games left, including this one, in the first half of the season. The winner of the first half will be automatically into the championship series at the end of the season. Got him. Renato strikes out, and DeJesus and Rogers strike out the side. And what you want to do, obviously, is somehow get a berth in the championship series. The winner of the first half meets the winner of the second half. Now, what happens if you win both halves? Then there is no championship series. That's it. It's over. If you win the first half and the second half, you're the overall winner and you get the ring. If you win the first half but don't win the second half, then it's you and whoever wins the second half in the championship series. So the Pacifics need to sweep, sweep the Stompers tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday. And if they do that, then they are automatically into the championship 
series. As you can see, one of our guys wearing his funky wig there out on the field. That's, by the way, if you come down to the yard on Tuesday, next Tuesday, is that right? Next Tuesday? Yeah. Funky wig next Tuesday. Funky wig next Tuesday? All right. I was just looking at the schedule. I want to make sure there is a game next Tuesday. I don't know. We better check that. But I know you're going to want to come down and get a funky wig one way or the other because they look pretty good. Anyway, first half winner meets the second half winner. And the Pacifics have a chance to be the first half winner. But the only way they can do it is to win tonight, tomorrow, and Thursday. They must win all three. Otherwise, there's no chance that they are in. And that's why this series is so critical. And they're always asking, what's going on with the Admiral medal game? Right. And so the medal are playing spoiler role for this series. Admirals, if Sonoma gets one here, Admirals are out. So the medal, pretty much, they got to play spoiler role. Admirals have got to sweep. They're hoping that the Pacifics at least take two from the Stompers, but we go down in the final game or two out of three. Fielder, Scenarios are up in the air, and that's what makes this first half crown so great. Yeah, this is really exciting. That is uh, that is for sure. It's never been done this way. And everybody's talking about the standings all the time, and that's the way that it should be. Here's Ravel Santana. Santana, two for three on the night with a run scored back in the first inning. That's pretty impressive. Just his ninth game with the Pacifics here in the bottom of the seventh. It'll be Santana, Hoba, and Williams. And the first pitch is hammered into right field, into the corner, and it's just foul. Oh, did he smoke it. Santana batting in the three hole. The Pacific's lead is 5-3. One strike on him with Hoba on deck. Santana in just those eight games racked up just three RBIs. But as I mentioned earlier, two hits so far tonight. Up and in. One and one. Batting 286. Santana in those eight games, eight hits in 28 at bats, three walks, five strikeouts. Here's the 1 1, and he waves at one in the dirt. One and two. And Garcia had Santana completely fooled there. He was sitting dead red, and Garcia came off speed, and Santana wasn't even close. Pacifics would love to throw another crooked number up. They were able to get to Gabriel Garcia in the first and in the fourth. And then the Stompers come roaring back. Well, they did come roaring back in the sixth when they put their three up. And now it's one and two. Garcia now has slowed everything way down. Here it is. Very high. And Ravel Santana lays off. Two and two. He has brought this tempo to his pace. And he might be a little fatigued too. That's a wake-up call to him. All those runs scored. When you're sitting on a 2-3-3 ERA and all of a sudden a team that you've beaten three times this season throws a five up on you. You need to reassess as Santana fouls at the first base side. Day game tomorrow, 12-15 first pitch. Stompers bullpen. Pitchers hanging out. Having a good time. And a fly ball to left field. And this is going to get down a base hit. Chenworth throws it in quickly. And Ravel Santana's aboard with a leadoff now single. And what an at bat. Garcia had a couple pitches where Santana just wasn't seeing it well. Able to stay alive. 
Gets a pitch he can drive and puts solid contact on it. That's a great at bat. By the way, tomorrow that 12-15 first pitch, kids under 12 get in free. Here's Michael Hoba. First pitch swinging Hoba up the middle. It's to Gavlik for one. He steps on the bag over to McDonald. Double play. And that hurts. So Hoba hits the very first pitch as he does quite often. So back in the fifth. And he and did it back in the fifth, you're right. So two away. And I think he was in the same mindset. See a fastball, belt high, I'm hacking away. But it didn't turn out too well for him. Well, Hoba's, Hoba's one of the great guys in the game, that's for sure, but he's never met a fastball, a high fastball that he didn't like. Jeremy Williams stands in and kind of a windmill swing. One strike on him. Illuminated Albert Park scoreboard. And Williams takes up and away. Batting 267 with two home runs and 22 RBIs. One and one. And I say that with all due respect to Hoba. I mean, the guy knows what he's doing. He had a 37 game hitting streak back in 2012. As Jeremy Williams with a mighty hack goes 1 2. I think when we see Williams at its best, or at his best, is when he's hitting balls straight back up the middle. Right now, this loop in his swing, he's getting under it. One, two. And he takes away. Two, two. His shoulders start dipping down, and then you get that uppercut. When he's on it, he's hitting balls all over the yard, right on the knob. Five, three here in this must-win game for San Rafael. And yes, they must win tomorrow, and they must win Thursday. But one game at a time, just as good old Zach Pace was talking. And the fastball is up and in, and Garcia really humped up. And I think he hit low 90s there as he gets Jeremy Williams swinging. We'll be back in a moment right here on Marin TV and the 2014 coverage of the Pacific's. Please stay with us. You're watching Marin TV. Marin TV is made possible by the generous support of Good Earth. Dedicated to the health and sustainability of our community since Everybody, we're back here on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. Marshall McDonald is going to lead off. Yours truly, Stuart Horn. It's 5 3 in favor of the Pacifics. Chuggy uh, Rogers out on the mound. And the big right hander heaves a slider in there. A little low for a ball. All right, director, I can still hear you. McDonald, the big right-handed hitter, he'll be followed by Del Valle and Chenworth. And he fouls one back to the screen. And it's one and one. Mm -hmm. 
McDonald batting 250. And he takes in the dirt. Two and one with Devaye on deck. Defensively for the San Rafaels, Santana in left and Zach Pace in center with Michael Hoba in right. The infield from third to first is Boyd, Kiriakos, Fontaine, and Orofice. And McDonald takes three and one. Pacific's had a day off yesterday, and Rogers and I and Fontaine, oh, up and in. And McDonald almost tasted it as he takes a couple steps out toward Rogers. He could smell the cork in that baseball. That yeah. was up and in. That was close. And, you know, hitters tend to take that stuff personally, but I highly doubt that Rodgers would, A, try and hit a batter. B, I certainly wouldn't try and beat him. And uh, this would not be the time to put a runner on. That just got away from him. It just got away from him. So he walked him. But as I was saying that Fontaine and Rogers and I went out and played a little golf yesterday. And those guys, man, when an athlete like those two hit a golf ball, it goes about 400 miles, maybe more. And they really hit it. They're both big, strong guys. You know, it's funny how athletes can play different sports well. And that, that motion as Del Valle takes low and away is somewhat similar. You know, swinging a golf club is somewhat simil uh, similar to swinging a baseball bat as Rogers comes home now. And a curveball is taken for a strike one and one. Yeah, they're both they're both just I can imagine they're good at everything they try all sports. Chenworth is on deck and Devaye batting 350. The catcher and a changeup is stroked into center field that lands right in front of Zach Pace who brings it in quickly and now Dan Rogers has two on with nobody out to deal with and Reed Chenworth the eight hole hitter who bats 291 now Chenworth can hit for power with four home runs and 18 RBIs so Chuggy is going to have to be careful now batting for Sonoma, left fielder, Reed and if anybody Chenworth. thought that the stompers were going to go away in this ball game we're dead wrong I don't yeah I don't you're not in first place for you know, I mean there's a reason you're there and that's because you don't panic. And they're not panicking. And now they've got the tying run at first base. And a big stick at the plate. Wind is blowing over the left field wall, which would be opposite field for Chenworth, who bunts it back to Rogers. He gloves it and goes to first, and the sacrifice is complete. So Chenworth moves everybody up. And the stage is set for Sonoma to tie this game up. Now he does his job. And now it all rests on Rodgers to not make a mistake. It's absolutely right. Three runs on 13 hits, one error for the visiting Sonoma Stompers. Five runs on 12 hits with one error for the San Rafael Pacifics. One away here in the top of the eighth inning. T.J. Gavlik with runners at second and third. First pitch is outside. Ball one. Top of the order, and Matt Hibbert is on deck. Just another huge moment in the game, and Rodgers wants to have a quick word with Boehner. Maybe switch up the signs. He's got... Devaye out there at second base, who's a catcher. And if anybody's going to pick up the signs and relay them around the yard to his teammates, it's going to be the catcher. Oh, he made a motion to Gavlik. And I think that's, you're exactly right, why Boehner went out there and says, hey, let's change it up. Because he picked up on something. I think that's exactly what happened. So when you've got your catcher at second base, 
he's probably motioning to the hitter about what's coming up because he has a perfect view of what the sign the catcher of the Pacific's catcher is sending out to the pitcher. Gavlik stands in and now with a, oh, he gets a called strike a little high in the zone, two and one. And once again, Boehner's barking something out at Rogers because I'm sure that Del Valle out there at second base is doing everything he can to pick up the sign. And there's a perfect angle you can see on the television screen. Breaking ball is away. Now it's three and one. Rogers does not want to load him with only one out. And this becomes a big pitch because now you got to come into Gavlik or you load the bases and you got to face Hibbert. Here it is. Walked him. Trouble. The only good news, and Rogers is clearly frustrated as Dan DePace is going to come out. I can see Patrick Conroy is up, but I don't I don't think he's warming up. Conroy, of course, is looks like Allen's coming in. And Colin Allen, yeah, who's just back from well, Colin Allen was all over the country. Who's normally reserved for the closers role is being brought in and in place of Dan Rogers. And I don't think that's a bad call. Not at all. First half championship is on the line. And right now in your bullpen, this is probably the best arm you got. And you got a bases loaded jam. Who else other to call on? And if you don't win tonight, there is no tomorrow. So might as well, you know, throw it all out there right now and see if something sticks. And uh, while, of course, Patrick Conroy was helping get things organized down in the bullpen, he would never come in in this situation. Uh, Patrick Conroy reserved for his next start, which I think would be scheduled for, I got to think, say Saturday? No. Yeah, maybe Saturday. Probably, yeah, probably Saturday. So Conroy's not a ch uh, candidate to come in, but Chris Rice is down there. He's available. Um, Pacifics have a couple other pitchers who could also be available. But I think right now you got to throw it all out there. Have Allen finish out this the eighth and <clears throat> try and cruise through the ninth as, you know, as best you can. But here's the thing. The bases are loaded. There's only one out. You got to do it now. He, this is a perfect time to make the switch to your closer. Because uh, once again, if the Pacifics don't win tonight, that's it for the first half. The next two games would just be for fun. Because the second half doesn't even begin until Friday. That's the first game of the second half of the season. So the Pacifics have to do everything they can right now to stay alive and to try and win this game. And this is a max pressure situation. And you need one of the captains in the bullpen, Colin Allen, to be that guy to get you out of it. Kirshner's young, Rice is young, you already used Rogers. Those are young arms. And with your first half season on the line, you need a guy who's used to the pressure. And I think that's why we're also seeing Allen in here. Yeah, that's a good call. I mean, if you're, if you're a closer, then you're all about pressure. And Allen's been all over the country over the last week or so. And, and I was speaking to the uh, president and general manager, Mike Shapiro, today. And Colin Allen is committed to the rest of the year with the Pacifics. And that's a good thing if you're a Pacifics fan. Because you've got to have a good closer. A quality closer is uh, paramount. People think, uh, yeah, a, a closer, you know. Uh, they come in, they throw three quick outs and they get all the glory well those last three outs are the toughest and uh, you you've got to have a quality closer to be a well-rounded squad so Allen's out on the mound and the first pitch to Hibbert is lifted to right field Hobo's coming in he's got it and there will be no throw home as Marshall McDonald does not try and tempt fate by running in against Hoba's strong arm. So Hibbert is gone on one pitch. And Hibbert's gonna get an absolute earful. You come in with the bases loaded 
and a pitcher that you haven't seen all night, and you swing at the first pitch and with an unproductive out, nothing to show for it. Great out for Allen in the Pacifics, but terrible decision by Hibbert. Glenn Walker now with two down and the bases loaded. What a different landscape the Pacifics are working with, and a fastball is poured in against Walker for a strike. Jace Ray is on deck. So, Colin could end things quietly here, or Walker could make a big mess of things for the Pacifics with a base hit. Fastball is outside, and Boehner did a good job to backhand it. One and one. And DeValle has great speed at second, so if a ball gets into the outfield, he will score. And it's foul back to the screen now. One ball and two strikes. Two down here in the top of the eighth inning. Pacifics five, Sonoma Stompers three in this must-win game. We cannot say it enough. There's Colin Allen, the bearded wonder. Steps off and wants to. Walker's never seen Allen. This is his very first time. He could go down to his slider here. Here's the one, two. Check swing. They appeal to the field umpire. No swing. Two and two. Boy, that was close. That was close. I thought for a moment Walker went around, and I think DePace is letting him hear it. And I think if DePace is letting him hear it, he has a legitimate beef. Yeah, you're right. He was up on his feet because he really seemed to go all the way around. Seemed like if he had connected with the ball, it had gone over the center field wall. <laughs> he went that far around. Two and two. Two outs. Biggest moment in the game right here. Curve ball outside. And Alex, I just said biggest moment in the game right here. This one trumps it. Because now the bases are loaded. The count is full. And you, the last thing your closer wants to do is walk in a run. Here it is. Got him swinging. Colin Allen comes in and gets it done to maintain the slim 5-3 lead for the San Rafaels. As we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, it'll be Mike Orofice, followed by Eric Boehner and Chase Fontaine. Six, seven, eight hitters. 5-3 Pacifics when we come back on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. All right, everybody, we're back in the bottom of the eighth inning. Stuart Horn and Alex Swan with Mike Orofice, the left-handed batting first baseman, leading things off for San Rafael. Pacific's 20 and 16 against Sonoma's 21 and 15. Orofice takes inside corner for a strike. Orofice on the night. Has a hit back in the first inning. Hit into a fielder's choice in the fifth. Takes one in the dirt, one and one. We're in the bottom of the eighth inning and it's a 5-3 ball game. Boehner's on deck. Orofice with one home run and 18 RBIs. That RBI, the 18th, came back in the first. A slider is just absolutely poured in beautifully by Gabriel Garcia. I got to think this is Garcia's last b batter here. And that could be. And he delivers in the dirt two and two. Because he's got Boehner coming up next. And the lefty-righty matchup would favor the hitter in that case. And there's a lot of people up and throwing in the Stompers' bullpen. Fastball is indoors and has Orofice buckling out of the way. And he, boy, he really reacted as if he was about to get hit in the chin. And now the count is full. And this could be Garcia's last pitch of the night. 
either way. And he got him swinging. And he swung a ball four. Frankly, that was up in the zone, but the hard fastball no, looks so good, good when it's up a little bit. Eric Boehner. And Boehner will have a chance. Well, Garcia had an excellent payoff pitch, and Serrano is going to let him go after Boehner. I'm surprised. The lefty-righty matchup favors the hitter in this case. And the high cheese, and Boehner lays off. One ball on him. Batting 310 with a home run and six RBIs. He had a double back in the fourth to left field and then reached on an error on Steve Renato at third base in the fifth. Takes for a strike, one and one. And a long fly ball to deep left field. Backing up is Chenworth at the wall. And Chenworth reaches up and he makes the grab at the wall. Holy cow. He even hit the wall so hard he bashed through a piece of the fence. And maybe there's a gate out there. Bader let it fly. Hit it about as hard as it can be hit down the line. And it was just skied. He just got under it a tiny bit, but hit it a ton. Or is it, it's a short corner down there. It is. 320. And Ray had that gate to look out for. And that was a tough play. Chenworth just absolutely reached up, and I think he may have taken away a home run. But here's Chase Fontaine with two away. Fontaine is first pitch swinging. A broken bat into foul ground, and that's it. Fontaine goes down with a pop-up to Renato. And the Pacifics here in the bottom of the eighth go quietly. Well, the stage is set in the top of the ninth inning as the Pacifics lead it by two. It'll be Jace Ray followed by Joel Carranza and Steve Renato here in the top of the ninth inning, Alex. And if the Pacifics can hold him, and Colin Allen, as we suspected, is going to do it out here on the mound for the Pacifics. <laughs> that is, take the ball. <laughs> and let's hope he can do it. And that is, uh, get three more outs. Well, the Pacifics will be a third of the way there. They need to win all three games over Sonoma, and they have not swept the Stompers all season. And they need all three of them now to get into the championship series at the end of the season. We'll have it for you in its entirety when we come back in just a moment on Marin TV's coverage of the 2014 Pacifics. We'll be right back. Well, this is it, everybody. Jace Ray is going to lead things off against Colin Allen in the first pitch. Here in the top of the ninth inning in this 5-3 ball game is taken for a strike. And a curveball is swung on and missed. And very quickly, Colin Allen is ahead. Nothing in two. It was Ryan DeJesus to start things off. And Dan Rogers came in relief. And Colin Allen now to finish things. And he gets him on three pitches. How about that? It's impressive stuff for Jace Ray. Ray, one of the leading batters in the league with a 3-2-3. And he goes down swinging for his second strikeout of the night. Joel Carranza now, the cleanup batter. So just to ramp up the drama here in the ninth, it's three, four, five hitters for the Stompers. You got to go through the heart of the order to earn it. Fastball is on the outside black, called a strike. 
And big time players step up in big time games, kind of like Allen's been doing. Yeah, Allen's absolutely one of those guys. That's why it's so great that he's committed to the rest of the season with the team outside one and one. He had offers. Other leagues, higher levels of independent ball, but made the commitment to the Pacifics. Likes the ownership, likes the team, likes the fans. Cued first base side, now one and two on a breaking ball. And Colin Allen is a celebrity here in San Rafael. There's no question about it. And feels the team can win. And that was a huge vote of confidence for the for everybody. One, two. Fouled off again as Carranza just fought him off. And I think he's hungry after how last season ended. He wanted to come back and bring that title to well, the Pacifics. The, yeah, the Pacifics did everything last season except win the title, including winning 73% of their games last year. And I don't know how you win 73% and not claim the title as this is up and in. <laughs> and Carranza did well to get out of the way of it. And now it's 2-2. One away here in the top of the ninth. Pacific's two outs away. Fly ball to right field. Hova looking up. Gone. So Carranza hits a 2-2 fastball about nine miles over the right field wall. And the first home run of the night belongs to Joel Carranza. His 10th home run of the season. Carranza leading the team numbers anyway with 10 home runs. That is how strong Carranza is. Opposite field bomb. Challenge fastball. And usually you see right-handed power hitters turn on it. He goes opposite field. That was impressive. 5-4. And the first pitch to Steve Renato. Is across the belt, but called the ball, one and now. Now Allen's got to be careful. Got to keep the ball down. Five-hole hitter, Renato, and across the knees, and it's called a, a strike, one and one. Five-four after the home run by Carranza. Allen. Brings a slider and taken by Renato, now one and two. Carranza hit it. It was two and two at the time when he launched that thing, Alex, and it was impressive. The only home run tonight by either squad, and he gets him swinging on a slider. Two down. Well, once Carranza took him deep, with that fastball, he only threw one fastball to Renato. And the way that hard curveball and slider are breaking right now, Allen's in command with that pitch, and he's not afraid to go to it for a strikeout. Marshall McDonald now. With two away, and a fastball is swung on and missed. Strike one. Jaime Del Valle is on deck, but... It's all down to Allen and McDonald here in the ninth. Pacifics need one more out. Low and away. One and one. Our next telecast in the final Marin TV telecast of the 2014 campaign will come in 48 hours. Alex and I, our final televised broadcast. And a fly ball down the right field line is foul. And the Pacifics are down to their final strike. That is, they need one more strike where the Stompers are down to their final offensive strike. Pacifics fans are up. And the final broadcast will actually be Friday. Uh, maybe we're going to have to check that. One and two. Check your schedule, folks. I'm not sure what it is. Two and two now. And here it is. Oh, 
just missed on a on a ball across the knees, a pitch across the knees. It's been called a strike consistently tonight. Now the count is full. Boehner thought that was the ball game. He hopped up, took a couple steps toward Colin Allen. Here's the payoff pitch. Got him! Looking! McDonald is going to stay and have a word, but the Pacifics have won it. And uh, your final total is four runs on 14 hits for the visiting Sonoma Stompers. One error. Five runs on 12 hits on one error for the Pacifics. And the save is to Colin Allen. The losing pitcher tonight is Gabriel Garcia, and the winner is Ryan DeJesus. And Alex, your player of the game. Player of the game, Colin Allen. Coming in, huge situation, bases loaded, one out in the eighth. Got to preserve a 5-3 to three lead. Gets it done, shuts him down. He gave up the bomb, but that's my player of the game tonight. I think that's a very good choice, and I will go, since you're going to go with pitching, I'm going to go with hitting tonight, and I'm going to go with Michael Hoba, who back in the first inning really got things started after Zach Pace had a shot up the middle. Then Ravel Santana had a shot up the middle, actually in the left center, and then Hoba knocked him in. So I'm going to take offense, you're taking defense, and... Love it. Yeah, and the Pacifics are a third of the way there. If they win two more against the Stompers, they are insured of <clears throat> a berth in the championship series at the end of the season. Well, everybody, thank you for spending your evening with us and the Pacifics and Marin TV. And check the schedule for our next and final televised broadcast of Pacifics baseball right here on Marin TV for Alex Swan, Stuart Horn signing off, saying so long from Albert Park. Thank you.